And today's video is going to be a little bit different where I'm going to be talking about BMF and the documentary series because I saw it and uh, it was good. I, I liked what I was like seeing and everyone was telling their stories. The crew was explaining. The members was explaining about like their time when they was um, with Meech before like the whole indictment and him going to jail. I, I was really interesting because I never heard of BMF until the show and like for real like i've never heard i was just like oh okay like when i was watching the show i'm like wait bmf and this and that. i'm thinking it was like power like oh like this is 50s like and you know another show that he did so i'm like oh okay but then i look it up and i started watching i'm like oh and the son is playing as the father and going through like his life and used to, the experiences that he had to go through and watching like the documentary it, it you know people could say what they want they could say like oh yeah selling drugs is bad and getting into like the whole thing at that point in time in the 80s we're saying 80s was like the most craziest times to have ever lived in and i've said this before like people who had to experience that time you know people like crack rock and coke and drugs was at its all-time high back then that's why people who was like lucky enough to make money and never got busted by the cops and was able to like have afford their homes in miami or just get out the country those are the like the lucky ones you can kind of say like those ones are like the the true like like one percent who never got away oh, i'm sorry the ones who got away with it compared to like the ones where they was able to spend all that money but eventually they got caught so you know looking at like uh meech's story and how you know his father you know had like a job and at the time the you know couldn't pay the bills things was racking up then the father and the mom got the divorce and then they had like 30 days because they couldn't pay for the rent so you know meach and terry had to get on a job start selling drugs in the street and get one like um other players who was you know involved with like selling drugs and stuff and it's like it's it's wild like that entire documentary was kind of wild like they function as a group and i remember when i looked at like a little video of like when meach was explaining he was like oh you know like we a family we not fighting this and that he said if you want like big women thick women skinny women you have your own you know, if you want to share, you share. If you don't, you don't. And he's just like, there's no other family that's out there. And I'm looking at this, and as the documentary goes on, I'm like, this kind of makes sense. And the way he had, like, this entire group, I'm like, compared to, like, any other group that's out there, other gangs that's like, oh, like, let's just say, like, you know, you got one guy who's in the gang, and there's a girl that she's fucking with the other guy and he do some fuck shit to the girl or to the guy just to get with the girl or whatever and there's a fight that breaks out or somebody kills somebody because that was that person's girl but from what i'm saying i'm like oh he like meech wasn't like that he was like the most chillest person ever but he ruled by love this is what i'm like i'm getting with him like he seems like he ruled by love and not by fear yeah he had like protection he had guns bodyguards and this and that and i'm like okay but his rule seemed like it was ruled by love it wasn't ruled by fear from what i'm seeing compared to like other like kingpins mob bosses where they ruled by fear where it was like oh you did anything wrong i'm gonna kill your entire bloodline or i'm gonna kill your family and make you watch on some pablo escobar shit and any other like drug kingpins that was out that was doing some horrendous shit i remember i was looking at a something i don't know if it has anything to do with like pablo escobar or was like a drug lord or whatever where they um uh, they did things to like a 10 year old girl before they burnt and killed her like and I, I, it has something to do with like a like a drug cartel or something but i mean even that was just like whoa that shit's crazy but bmf it was it wasn't anything like that like yeah they had they you know guns and problems and this and that but it wasn't like that but I mean, Jesus, like, just watching it was, like, kind of crazy, and, you know, like, the, like, the, the lavish lifestyle, like, <laughs> Meech was living, parties, the, like, the drugs, the drinking, I'm like, okay, T, like, like, uh, Terry, you know, he seems like the guy that wasn't partying like that, he wasn't drinking, he was, like, the guy that was, like, really stable, so you got, like, one brother 
who's like all over the place and you got the other brother who's just like a well-functioned oil machine so i'm like okay like all of that was like pretty good it was really really good and to know that one brother was like street smart and the other brother wasn't because when you know feds came along they started wiretapping and it was like oh and you, you had you know terry on like the mic well not on the mic but on the recording saying a bunch of shit and uh meech they didn't catch shit on him they was just like eh. they only saw was like the parties and and and, and the cars but it was like he there was nothing but damn like <laughs> I don't know. I just find it like crazy. Just all of it is just like like amazing to me. Like how this function and this was like back then. This was back then, and they gave both men thirty. But then I seen like the end that um, Terry was released in twenty twenty because of the whole COVID thing. So he got out. They tried for Meach, but they was like, Nah, man, you gonna stay in there. Which is like I I find that crazy because I'm like, you released Terry. Okay, I understand because you know health complication and, and COVID, but you would think they would release they would they would release Meech, but I guess they'd be like, nah, 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 nah we're not gonna release him. We already released his brother. He he gonna do like a he still gonna have to do his six years in prison, which is crazy because I think his son, uh, Meech Junior. I think he's, I think he was born what they said two thousand. So if he's running by the years, he's not gonna he's gonna be twenty nine. I think when his son gets out. Well, well, oh, Jesus, I said when the son gets out. <laughs> I mean, when he gets out, his son is going to be like 29. So I'm like, okay. And I, and I think at the end, the guy said that he's going to be like, I think 58 or something. So Jesus, like, yo, this is crazy. But the, 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 the way that the show has been portrayed about like his entire life and this and that, that he didn't want his son to like, go through the things that he had to go through because his experience of building up wasn't wasn't you know it was crazy from like what they said 1990 to what i think 2007 and it, he said it was like i think 15 years ish i guess like 15 years for them to get him but to like go through like getting shot ahead man said he got shot in the ass i said oh wow <laughs> oh wow he was like he was so drunk he was like yo my ass is burning. I was like, oh, shit, he got shot in the ass. Like, I don't know. It was just like hearing all of these, like, stories. It's just crazy to me, yo. Like, oh, my God. Like, BMF is, I don't I, shit, damn. Shit, because I was trying to think, like, most of my guys, if they was talking about this, because let me see. This was, like, what, 2006, seven. Oh, shit, nah. Mm -mm, that shit completely missed me <laughs> it completely missed me because i'm trying to think if like if anything like came up but i'm like nah 2006 or 7 that was a different time for me so it it kind of like went over my head if all of this shit was going down like all oh, him getting arrested you know they coming at him at texas pulling him over i like his lawyer his lawyer I was going to compare his lawyer to, like, OJ. Like, it seemed like he was, like, that lawyer that was like, yo, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to do that. Like, we won't go to trial. But if they would have went to trial, I think it would have been, you know, it would have backfired because the people that already, I guess, went into witness protection and already snitched, it would have been over for me. They would have been like, oh, because all this evidence that, you know, money laundering, drugs, this and that, he would have done life. So, it was smart of him to like take the plea deal but the cool thing about it is is that they never snitched on anybody they never really snitched and that's like one of the key things about it where you look at all these people that went to jail like you look at um bobby schmurda you look at uh tech nine bobby schmurda did his seven years he would have got out early but he took time for rowdy rowdy got out i remember but bobby took time for him because that was his man's and i'm like that's interesting. Not that many people would do that. They wouldn't like simply take time for their mans as well and then get out and be rewarded like a million dollars and like a jet waiting for you. Like that that's not how that works. In 6ix9ine's case, 6ix9ine snitched. Like he he ratted and, and people was just like, oh no, nah, we we're not gonna fuck with you. But then this conflict, there's like I guess um reports i guess about like i guess they held this baby mama hostage and i guess his mom like i don't know i don't know like I, all of that stuff i was hearing i'm like mm. 
I don't know. And then he gets out, and then he made, like, that whole song about, yeah, I snitched, I'm a rap, but then look at it. It killed his music career. He's not doing music. I think the last thing I saw of him, he was doing a podcast. So, that, and no one's really fucking with him anymore. It's just like, ah, fuck him, fuck him. But you know the real people that he snitched on, they be like, listen, if we ever catch you around these parts again, you ain't ever gonna come back, so... That's how that is for, like, most people who snitch because, you know, snitches will never be forgiven. They be like, listen, you ain't never, um, we don't want to see you again. But for the BMF family and for Meech and Terry, it was like they didn't snitch on anybody. They took the, uh, you know, jail time like men, even though Terry got out and Meech is not going to get out for, like, another six. So it's like, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's very interesting to see all this play out. Like, they was a well-oiled machine family nobody could basically get them nobody could basically get them and i was like yo this is great absolutely amazing but um yeah i just wanted to like share like some of my thoughts on it and and hear like some of you guys opinions on like what you think about like the whole bmf story in the documentary because personally i thought it was amazing i thought it was great for them to explain everything that happened but um yeah, you know, post your comments down below on what you think of the BMF series. And, yeah, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you all in the next one. I forgot I forgot to add, like, a couple more things into this, uh, my review. That, basically, I didn't even know that um, there was another white boy besides white boy Rick. I didn't know there was, like, white boy Gore. And seeing, like, in the documentary, like, when White Boy Gore was explaining about, I think, his either his cousin or his brother, where he was disabled and, and you know, basically meets in the gang, was just like, oh, you know, they didn't even tease him. They didn't judge him or anything. They brought him along on the trips, and he was just like, you know, it meant a lot to him. And I, and I was watching, and I'm like, yo, they brought him along? Normally, like, you know, some gang members be like, ah, man, like, he's, nah, man, like, he's a liability, this and that, but... They brought him along, and he was just, like, on these trips. I mean, I, you seen Megan Good. <laughs> she was on the tapes going to Miami. Meech had all these rooms in Mexico. I'm like, this man, like, yo, this fucking guy. He was, he was like, an interesting person. And then to see, like, I think he said, like, the Crips and the Bloods, they was all there. Like, I personally, you know what I think? I think I might catch flack for even saying this, but I think I'm gonna have to go along and say this. If things was different, like like uh, if things was different, and let's just say like Meech didn't go to jail or whatnot. Personally, I believe that BMF Black Mafia family was technically the first Black Lives Matter, just in a different standpoint and a different time period. Technically, they was the first because the way how. In the, in the documentary that Meech was sending kids to school, private schools or whatever, he was helping out. So I'm like, he, again, like I said, he ruled by love. It seems like he didn't rule too much by fear. So if this man did all of this, right, and I'm thinking maybe if things would have changed like a little bit, like let's just say like, you, you know, things was different. I think he could have done a lot more good a lot more good in the community maybe not in just in atlanta but maybe in all communities because it seems like they was like that that gap that bridge that seems like they was you know bringing everybody together they still lay differences like he said at, at you know sundays at the table whatnot i think he he, he was on to something he was really on to something and how he changed the landscape of things forever and there was never no group like that and there will never be another group like that so i think they was he was on to something he was on to make changing and making things better for everybody but i understand like you know people say like oh yeah you know the drugs was the factor stuff but at the time what can you do he like he said on welfare food stamps what can you possibly do at that time when you know drugs is basically the only way that you're going to provide for a loved one um, to pay their bills or whatever, because, like, just imagine, like, you know, there was some sort of medicine, like, a medicine that can save a person's life, a family member or a friend, and let's just say that that drug is really expensive, the drug is, like, a hundred thousand dollars, and you, like, Jesus, you don't have a hundred thousand dollars, and nobody you can borrow 
to you know can give you that money so what what is your best option your best option would be to sell those drugs and you selling kilos or whatever and guess what you make that money probably within maybe two weeks or so and let's just say that family member or friend has only a month and you making that money quick like maybe in two weeks three weeks whatever and then next thing you know you have the money and you're able to save that person's life so essentially with the money that they had they was able to save you know uh their parents' life you know loved ones people that was around them people that was in a circle they was able to do that that's why i said it's something about like black mafia family the bmf it was they was a really special unit really special unit that could have done some good they could have really done some good you know, but unfortunately, it didn't really go down that way. And by the time Meech gets out of prison, he his son is going to be 29 years old. And what he's what they said in the interview, like he's going to be like 58, I think, when he gets out. So that's going to be a whole nutshell. And I can even imagine like if Meech the son, let's just say he has a kid by then, if he gets out of prison, I'm sorry, when he gets out of prison, like at that time, who knows? He probably might be looking at his grandson or granddaughter around that time. So it's just wild to even think about, like, all of the stuff that happened, like, way back then. People considered him to be the black Pablo Escobar, which he was, but he wasn't a ruthless guy. He just ruled by love and did things differently. And it, and it always stems back to what Denzel Washington said. It's all about how you was raised at home. If you was raised in a great environment or brought up in a certain way your actions outside and like in, like when you interact with people and outside is going to be completely different you won't be as what we see a lot of people that we see currently you know we see people at the job and you got these fucking people who either backstab you talk shit about you this and that it's about the environment that they was raised in and the people that they hang out with but you look at like i said you look at Meech and like he said he wanted to try to do less harm as possible, you know, good guy, good fucking guy, you know, but yeah, but that's all I just wanted to say, but you know, um, like comment, subscribe and share, catch you all in the next one.